It's a real pleasure having you on. Take us away. Thank you so much first for this opportunity. And uh, I have been asked to speak on uh, how to position oneself for growth during uh, the interesting times that we find ourselves in. And so I just have a few points that I want to take you through and then I'll open it up for questions. I find that questions sometimes allow you to go a, deep, a bit deeper than uh, even the content that I'd have prepared. Um, first of all, this is a bit of a hard one because I don't know whether I have uh, uh, seen career growth myself during this transition. So the first thing I thought of was, wow, is this uh, really for me? But I have uh, done a few things and I've seen a few people around me do a few things that I found interesting at a time uh, that no one could really have predicted where we find ourselves in. Uh, so I think the first thing for positioning oneself for career growth for me is your attitude or your mentality, okay? So this year has come with the challenges that would force one to easily give up or be defeated. So I would say the first step to positioning yourself for career growth during this transition is your attitude about what is possible during this season. I think a lot of people have given up. Uh, a, a very common saying that I have witnessed in different platforms is this year is the year for survival. And I'm very sad to say that I have said it myself. Now, what I feel that does for you mentally is that it then lowers your guard in terms of and your aggression and your ambition. And so when you walk around telling everyone this is the year for survival, I don't have any expectations for this year, chances are your mind uh, will follow your mouth in terms of how you think. So I basically think that the first step to positioning yourself for career growth is fighting the fear that nothing good will happen this year in your career, fighting the assumptions. In fact, a lot of uh, career experts are saying this year you have to learn how to stay positive. Uh, and for me, it's, it's, been, it's been a very interesting space because as a journalist, it is very easy to be negative. We are at the forefront of giving you all the news about COVID-19 uh, that there is out there. And so, you know, a lot of us took stock of the reality of these times even before the public did. And uh, we sort of put all our plans on hold as journalists because uh, like, like for me, I remember I was studying the effects of COVID-19 even in January, you know, before it hit. And so it's very easy and it's been very easy for me to get negative and uh, talk about first wave, second wave, third wave, and how, you know, you know, we've been doing the stats on how many people have lost jobs. It is and so many other things related to that. So the reality has been that I have had to fight uh, the feeling in my head that nothing good can happen this year. You just have to figure out how to survive. And so I would say step one of career growth is really your positive attitude. What are you telling yourself? Uh, you know, are you doing the things that will get you to where you need to be? Or have you given up uh, as many people tell me they have? Uh, so that's one. Secondly, I would say that if you want to position yourself for career growth during this season, this season has fortunately or unfortunately given us all a time to reflect. And the good thing about reflection is if done properly, it also gives you a chance to make adjustments. Okay. So especially when you look at February, March, April, when everything pretty much came to a standstill, a lot of us found we had a lot of time on our hands. Uh, the first line of defense was Netflix and movies. Of course, if you had enough money to have a stable place to live and that sort of thing, uh, and the wise people in that situation, I feel, are those who took time to reflect on their journey so far, whether they are on the right track and what changes they need to make. So I know a lot of people, including myself, who decided in that season that it's time to go back to school. So the skills that you have are not enough to take you where you need to be. Maybe they've, they've ridden you out well so far, but it's time to go to school. It's time to learn a skill. Uh, I know someone who actually engaged the services of a career coach uh, two months ago because they felt that whereas their career had been on the right trajectory, uh, they hit some head, they ran into some headwinds along the way, and they wanted to use this opportunity to reflect on uh, where else they could, you know, best uh, engage. Uh, you know, when you, you know, when you look post COVID, and of course, the discussion about if there'll be a post COVID or not is still out there. Uh, so yes, so they actually are in the process of realigning their skills with their trajectory and uh, with the hope that they'll come out in a better space. I, I, for example, began to ask myself, what would life look like after media? You know, so for those of you out there who've been doing the same thing for quite some time, a chance to reflect could also be a chance to ask yourself, after this thing that I am doing, where do I want to go to next? And if this is where I want to get to, 
what skills do I need, especially if I need a different set of skills. So what I'm doing right now offers me sort of a base, but if my next step is to go this way, I will need the skills that match with it. And so it, is it you know, time to meet a career mentor? Is it time to learn a new skill, whether online or offline and that sort of thing? Uh, and some experts have even talked about spending time now deeply researching interest fields and researching employers, perfecting resumes. And that's come up quite a bit, you know. Uh, if your CV, uh, some people are saying if your CV looks the same right now as it does in January, then you haven't spent appropriate time reflecting. It's not necessarily that you may have added a new skill, but just rejigging your CV to be more relevant to the world at a time when uh, priorities have changed, you know. Um, expanding your network of professionals. And, and I've seen a lot of people engaging more and more on platforms like LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, uh, um, writing. You know, we, people have had a lot more time to write articles and that sort of thing. Even if you're in university, whatever specialization or field you are in, uh, even a chance to blog and reflect on what is happening in your field could, could easily uh, expose you to your next employer or to someone who can actually give you a chance to make some money, uh, ETC. So that's something that I found quite interesting. Some people have even taken this time to hone their interviewing skills, maybe do mock interviews uh, via platforms like this one. Uh, so, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever works for you in those things that I've said could be very interesting in how you can position yourself. Uh, let me take you briefly through a few other things that I've learned uh, during this season. One, it's been a chance to try out something new. Uh, and I've had a lot of people saying that the other day, my, a doctor of mine who is in his 60s said he's learning uh, the piano and one other instrument. I don't know whether I believe him or not, so I won't say the name here. But he sounded very serious when he was saying that. I was like, look at you, man. You're in the, uh, some would say close to retirement, but he's picking up a new skill. For me, I started an online show. I felt that with the whole world you know, moving online, it was time for me to also engage myself in, 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 in something that would interest the digital audiences of Citizen TV. So I do an online show that's now maybe two and a half months old every Thursday at 5 p.m. On, on Facebook. And that for me is something new that was birthed you know, out of COVID, so out of the destruction that COVID brought. I know someone who, you know, a close relative of mine who started playing the guitar, he's doing online classes. Um, uh, and I know somebody else, uh, she, I'm not giving names in, because I'm not asking for permission. She was an actress who's actually done some stuff internationally, but she started a food delivery service, which she believes will outlive uh, the pandemic. And uh, I mean, I've seen her very aggressively pushing it online, ETC. And actually, I know two people, one, an IT ex practitioner as well, who decided to start sort of something that he was doing on the side as a side hustle, took it to the next level, and he's doing full, you know, meat delivery uh, very nicely at a time when, and he kicked it off at a time when many restaurants were closed. And so for both of them, I think when they look back over 2020, they will say that I did not sort of waste my time. I used that time to build another skill that I can add to my sort of core skill, uh, you know, when we come out of this pandemic. Um, I would say that finally, some people have talked about upgrading your key documents, your information, and I mentioned your CV. And this year would have been a good time to get a website up if you don't have one. I built my website two years ago off the internet. Nobody helped me. Uh, it's not the best website, but uh, it is one. And so now is a good time to have something like your portfolio or your website online, plus a LinkedIn platform. Uh, because you never know when someone will need to Google about you and what information uh, they'll need to find about you. They'll be able to get easily online uh, as well. This is also a time, and I spoke about staying positive, uh, to be patient. You know, It's been a very stressful time, and for career growth, it can seem, uh, you know, like especially for people who are applying for jobs, and you go online and you find there are fewer jobs now available. You know, I've been checking out uh, what's been happening on some career sites, and, you know, some people can say, I see fewer jobs now. I see fewer people talking about vacancies, and that can be quite frustrating. It's the time to be patient. It's a time to not allow yourself to get depressed. I know there are a lot of unanswered questions about people's careers. What are they going to do? And also, I know there are a lot of people who've lost their jobs. And uh, I like what one of my friends says for him. He, you know, he's taken a very pragmatic attitude of... Uh, trying his best to stay positive at a time like this. And I think it brings me back to my first point, which is I think the first step of any career growth is, is where you are mentally. Reading a lot of articles, 
reading even success stories. You know, I'm seeing people posting success stories about how while people were losing jobs, they've actually been, you know, you know, been out for two or three months, didn't give up, kept applying, kept applying. And someone called them in for an interview and they have just been offered a job. So having patience with yourself, having patience with those around you uh, at a time like this, I feel has been important. Uh, and, and, and I also said this, connecting with others uh, through networking and especially, you know, I've seen a lot of people talking about how they've used their LinkedIn at a time like this uh, for, for their best, you know, to better improve themselves. Uh, I haven't used mine as much as I sh as I would have wanted to. I probably should have written a few more articles, but I found very interesting articles on LinkedIn that have made me think uh, a bit more about where I need to be. And also platforms like this that Centronomy is offering, you know, um, over the course of this half morning, as you hear from different speakers, it could be the word of just one speaker uh, that could make the difference in your life and in your circumstances. And finally, I would say this, uh, if, you're, if your work opportunities have slowed down, whether you're in university or fully employed, uh, or whether you run your own business, I know this is controversial, but I've had a few people saying that now is the time to offer your services pro bono as a marketing strategy, and maybe as a way of giving back. I know a lot of people are using this time to give back, and you're not charging for that. You know, you're connecting someone who has maybe relief food with people who are hungry. And I think that's a, that's a most noble initiative and we need a lot more of that right now in Kenya. But the other day, someone approached me and said, hey, I know someone who's cooking very good food. Can you give them a chance? And I told them this. Uh, right now, it's, it's hard to convince people to buy food from outside. First of all, the, the worries about COVID. Second of all, a lot more people are home and cooking for themselves. But here's an idea. Have a demo where you pick a few key people and take the food, give them something, uh, I don't want to say free, because, and I know right now we live in a world where, you know, everybody wants to be paid for their service. It's only fair. But I would say this, if you manage to get your product to someone who can endorse it, and it costs you a bit, that could be a very good marketing strategy right now. And it's not just a Kenya discussion. I know in Kenya we've discussed, a, we've discussed paying for, for services, and it's been a very controversial uh, discussion. But if you could get a free sample to someone who will talk about it, what does what will that mean for your business? Is that is it time to think about a strategy like that, especially for anyone who runs a, a business? And I know right now, in terms of building your career, a lot of people are hosting webinar series, um, talking about crisis management, talking about their experiences. Uh, is that something you could do to boost your career at a time like this? It, the beauty for me, it positions you as an expert in your field. It puts your work in front of other people out there. And if people don't join your webinar, if you put it on YouTube, and you share it with a lot of people out there, you'll be able to build your profile. Some thoughts about how someone could position themselves for career growth during this transition. It's also a time, I would say, to work harder than ever before. Um, I, don't, I don't like saying this, but there are few opportunities in the market at the moment. The experts say that once we get out of the pandemic, opportunities will begin to emerge again, things will pick up. Uh, but for now, you know, whatever opportunity you have, give it 100%. Um, you never know who could see you at that time. And also it's good to be busy at a time like this. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Waihiga, uh, for those, those pearls of wisdom. Um, and some of, just to recap some of the things that you, you've mentioned is having a positive attitude. I think that's, that's a major, major uh, element. People really are losing heart, uh, throwing up uh, their hands in the air and they're like, look, it's over. So to, to keep being positive, to keep looking out for those opportunities. Uh, you alluded to the digital space, uh, whether that's an online show, getting on LinkedIn, all these platforms, and begin to put yourself uh, out there. Uh, one, one question that has come up uh, is for someone who's looking to transition into media, which is a space that you're in, what are some of the things that they could begin to think through, put together, so that as they go on LinkedIn, who should they be engaging? Um, like you're saying, there are few opportunities. And unfortunately, some media houses are actually closing, but yet there, there are opportunities. So how would I transition into the media space? Okay. Um, I would say that, first of all, you're right. It definitely is a tough time in the media space right now. You've seen the headlines uh, out there um media houses merging or media houses letting journalists go because revenue to media houses has actually gone down as has revenue to all sectors of our society and so it it, it is a tough time i would say this what from what i've seen i've seen a lot of people 
take their craft online. Okay, a lot of people that I follow are actually doing online shows, and some of them have even managed to attract sponsors. Now, this is not a short-term game. This is something that you have to be ready to invest in for the long haul, uh, because the whole, it could go two ways. One, you could go online and you build it up to a place where sponsors come and support you, and you have no need to, to you know, take it to a TV or radio station, you know, at the end of the day, because the, the craft will pay for itself on that online space. And I've seen Facebook, I, I've now started a new feature where they could make people pay for joining, uh, fa watching your content, and then you share a percentage of the revenue with them and, and stuff like that. The second one would be to catch the eye of a potential employer in the media space. And I have seen a few media vacancies on LinkedIn. So keep following LinkedIn uh, is to make sure your content is so powerful that you then catch the eye of you know, a media consultant or a media owner, ATC. Uh, but the other thing that I've seen is room for a couple of services. One, growth in the area of live streaming is big time right now. I have friends who do live streaming, which is basically that they have a computer, uh, a camera, and the software. Those guys are in business. I have friends who are busy Friday, Saturday, Sunday because of church or religious gatherings. And now that government has announced that they are looking at ways of opening conference facilities in hotels, not, not accommodation. They want to restart the uh, conference sector in this country, which has been battered. And so a lot of government institutions looking to do conferences to talk about their plans or AGMs, ETC. So once that happens, think of a conference that would ordinarily have had 500 people. That conference will mm -hmm. now be limited to 50 to 100 people. How will everyone else follow through live streaming? And so True. Guys who da, who align themselves and live streaming is I'm seeing guys are teaching other. It's a camera, it's a computer, and a, and a few other things is a growth area in the media that I'm seeing a lot of people are getting into. Online <laughs> content is the other thing, you know. Um, I, there are new YouTube stars who have now gotten endorsements, even in Kenya, the stuff that they were they were able to put out there at this time. So what I would say is this: think of something you if you if if you and I, and I think it depends on what you want to do in the media. If you want to be a presenter, uh, or, or that's where you think your key strength is, think of content that is not already available, mm. okay? What is it that you're not seeing out there? And then figure out how you can make it a program on YouTube. Now, it, it would force you to either borrow a bit of money to get the equipment or partner with someone. So 2020 is the year of is partnership because very few people have money to, to actually buy stuff. I would say this, you need to look for a team, a videography team, and there's, and there's lots of people now doing that and agree with them that this is how we will work. I need to have this show online every other day, um, either once a week or once a month, and this is what it will look like, and this is how different it will be. And I'm seeing a lot of people also using TikTok. Now, there's controversy around that because I know some people mm. would say the kind of content you see on TikTok is not content I'm willing to do. That's fine. You know, I feel... <laughs> I feel the world is ready for mature content. There are people who will appreciate that. And then there are people who take this other content. I mean, I, I leave that to you. But uh, for me, I now have an online show that goes on every Thursday. And I'm learning a lot of lessons about what's the best time to put it on? What content do people want? But for me, I want to leave them with something. So if I was a journalist, I mean, I've seen journalists now who are, who are reporting on, on YouTube. You know, they are not... Uh, waiting for uh, a media house to snap you up because, I mean, I'll be honest, uh, this year all media houses have, first of all, sent their interns home. It's a safety issue. They've also sent half the employees home. Again, a safety issue, so if anything was to happen with COVID, you're able to switch employees. You know which ones have been on duty, which ones have not been on duty. So even from a manpower uh, uh, place, media houses now just have fewer people. And that, is, that will be the situation until January. So between June and January, can you have built something online so that if you come to me, if you DM me on Facebook, you're not DMing me with, uh, with, with just please give me a job or please tell me about opportunities to ask me for advice on your staff. And I remember about two years ago, and, and again, this is one of the ideas. You might have a different idea. Two years ago, I remember a young man from my university would send me snippets of stuff he was doing. By the time I saw the fifth one, I was blown away. The confidence, the, 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 the pronunciation, the, just the way he was carrying himself. In my mind, I knew his transition to a newsroom would be almost seamless. And when he asked me about internship prospects, I knew automatically what to do. I just need to forward his CV and that demo to our HR. 
they would look at it amongst all others. I cannot, I have no power to interfere in that process. And, you know, surprise on me, he calls me and tells me, he messaged me and tells me they've called me. And then he came for the panel interview. I didn't even know which day he came. All I know is a week later, he told me, boss, they've called me now. I'm about to start. Fantastic. And when he came, he was the best intern of that uh, section. And although Fantastic. he did not get a job with us at that time, uh, one of my colleagues who, had, who was leaving to start a different outfit hired him. And so he is gainfully employed at a time like this. And I would mm. say his effort from the time that he was in university was exemplary. So yes, you must have something beyond a hard copy CV. There are, there are thousands of young people who want to get into media who have hard copy CVs. What makes you different? You know, ask if you ask yourself, and it's a question I am asking myself in my space. What makes me different mm. from my colleagues? What have I done in mm. the last one month that people can say, this guy is doing something different. So it doesn't stop. You know, you don't get in and then you stop. You have to keep, yeah. Yeah. You have to keep pushing. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, what I hear you saying to us is to get out there, begin to do some of the work. And really, it's about presenting what value you have and start where, where you are. Uh, and build from there. I also want to share, uh, Son of Soil says, great wisdom, uh, Mr. Oh, Waihiga. Uh, Kelvin Gadara says, great pointers, Waihiga, in this season. Really, I want to say a big, big thank you for, for the time, for these gems that you've been able to share, and also just to be on this platform with us uh, and to encourage us, um, I mean, to keep positive and start where you are. And I think it's also very, very encouraging that what you're saying is what you're doing. I think that's a, a powerful, powerful, uh, uh, it speaks to, to, to the practicality of what, what you're sharing. And I want to say a big, big thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Can I add yes. one last thing? Yeah, one go, last for it. Point go for it. Whatever field you're in and, and whatever field you're keen to get into, get onto Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and follow uh, a lot of people in that field so that you understand where that field is, where the thinking is, and so that even as you create your own content, you will know how to make content that's relevant for that field at that time. Look at, I mean, so if you want to be a journalist, you must be by now following, you must be following Jonah Lanamo. You must be following Asha Muelo. You must, okay, follow me as well. Uh, feel free to do so. Follow people who are in different media houses and follow people who, are, who have now gone into independent media. People like James Smart, uh, writers like Nanjala Nyabola. Follow them. It will give you ideas of where your head needs to be. If you want to be an architect, who's doing stuff in that field? If you want to be in finance mm -hmm. or economics, look at the budget last week. You need to be following all the right people because that is where opportunities could lie. That is where your mind will be stimulated to think, if this is what these guys are talking about, do I have an idea? Can I stand in a room with these guys and do small talk for 30 minutes? Or would I just be there, you know, very quiet? Mm -hmm. You know, your knowledge base needs to be wide at a time like this. And so I'm following people that I admire uh, because I know I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to improve my skills. Yeah. So just a tip that I hope will, uh, will assist you at this time.